Welcome back to my channel, My Montana Kitchen. My name is Sarah Hardy, and you can find me at the blog, MyMontanaKitchen.com, where I help women build healthy habits and feed their family delicious, fail-proof recipes every single day of the week. Today, I wanna to talk to you about a condiment that most of us probably have in our refrigerator at all times, and that is mayonnaise. But did you know just how easy it is to make your own mayonnaise at home, plus you know what ingredients are in it, you don't have to add sugar to it, and it tastes so much better than store-bought. <clears throat> My husband, it, it, okay, full disclaimer here for a moment. I grew up in the South, in East Tennessee. In my family, we did not eat mayonnaise. I don't know if we kept, uh, maybe my mom kept it around for like deviled eggs or something like that. We never put mayonnaise on a sandwich, uh, never. <laughs> um, and not until I met my husband did we start using mayonnaise. Um, however, that's been 20 plus years ago. So obviously now we have mayonnaise all the time. But my husband was very picky about his mayonnaise and it had to be Hellman's mayonnaise. Well, when we moved from Pennsylvania to Montana, I could not find Hellman's anywhere. They did not sell it, but they did have a brand called Best Foods that looked like Hellman's. And here come to find out on the west side of the country, it goes by Best Foods. On the east side of the country, it goes by Hellman's, same company, everything. So this is what I've always bought as long as we've lived here in Montana until we recently started making our own mayonnaise and found out that we like that way better even than the store-bought kind. So I'm going to show you today exactly how easy it is to make and then soon I'm going to have a recipe coming for a chipotle aioli that we make with our homemade mayonnaise and we put that on everything. I love having it on sweet potato bowls with chicken sausage, but that's not what the point of this video is. This is about how to make homemade mayonnaise. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you the ingredients that you need, and I'm gonna show you exactly how, how to do it. Um, I do use an immersion blender. This immersion blender I got from a thrift store for, I don't even remember how much I paid, but it wasn't very much. You can find these at thrift stores very often, just like bread machines. In my video about um, using your bread machine for a sourdough pizza crust or for 30 minute sprouted flour rolls, um, bread machines, ice cream makers, immersion blenders, you can almost always find them at a thrift store. So if you don't wanna pay full price for one on Amazon or from Walmart or wherever you shop at, um, then check your local thrift store and I'm sure you can find one for a good deal. Here are the ingredients that you need. First of all, you need an oil, and my favorite is avocado oil because it has no flavor. I find that the olive oil can be overpowering sometimes unless you get an extra light one. Salt, pepper, mustard powder, eggs, and lemon juice. That's all you need. So I've measured out my oil here. You want to have a container that has a nice lip on it for pouring. And I'm gonna just crack my eggs into my jar. Now, first of all, let's talk about this jar. This is a WEC tulip jar. I have two of these and I absolutely love them. They're perfect for making mayonnaise, for my sourdough starter. I use them for all sorts of things. I love them. So there's a link in um, the, you know, below the video where you can buy these on Amazon. Highly recommend them. And they're glass. Um, so whenever you're making, mayonnaise with an immersion blender. You want something that has fairly um, tall sides and you don't want it to be too wide. Like you wouldn't want to try to make it in a bowl. It works better if it's something that's a little more narrow. So if you have a tall glass um, that's kind of skinny, or like I said, this Weka jar is perfect. I mean, all right, the other thing that works really well is a pickle jar, an old pickle jar, washed out, that's perfect. and. The top of it is still big enough that you can put your immersion blender in it. So I'm just gonna crack my eggs into here. I 
And I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil. And then we're gonna start blending. And then after, when I start to blend, you'll see it'll start to emulsify. And then I'm just going to start pouring this and just pour a little bit at a time until all of this is gone. It's important that whenever you are doing this with an immersion blender, that you do kind of an up and down scraping motion as much as you can in the confines of the glass. That also helps. So don't just stick it in and just leave it there, but you wanna be actively moving it up and down, kind of pumping it and pulling it to the side and back up again. All right, let's get started. Look at that perfect mayonnaise now we have to add some other things to it to flavor it a little bit but see how easy that was i mean now granted my thing was going all over the place i should have had it setting on a, a non-slip something that would have helped it to not move around <laughs> so much um or you can have somebody else pour while you hold it, it Whatever, but I mean, I managed fine with it just like that. Like you saw, I just kind of followed it around. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna add some salt. And some pepper. And some dry mustard powder. Now, if you don't wanna use dry mustard, you can also use Dijon mustard. And then we're gonna put some fresh squeezed lemon juice. <clears throat> All right, then I'm just gonna attach this again and we're gonna mix this part up. have these jars these are not my favorite I haven't found one that I absolutely love yet for storing things storing sauces and whatnot um but this is what we've been using and so I just take a funnel and put it in the top and then scrape the mayonnaise into it now you can see I'm not going to have enough room for all of this because we weren't quite out of mayonnaise, <laughs> but I wanted to make some for this video. These are um, Pampered Chef funnels. I love them. This set is just, I think, $10, and it has a set of three. And one of the things I love the most about it is that it has this um, strainer that fits into all the funnels. There's three different sizes of funnels. They all nest together and the strainer fits in every one of them. Love it. But you don't need a strainer for the mayonnaise. And here we have homemade mayonnaise versus store-bought mayonnaise. Um, I should have maybe showed you the difference. You can see 
it looks pretty much the same. This one's a little more yellow from the mustard powder probably, but you can use this any way that you would use regular mayonnaise on hamburgers, um, in casseroles, in salads, for salad dressings, so many uses. And you just saw how easy it was to make. So get in your kitchen and give it a try and then let me know what you think. A few more tips, just kind of troubleshooting things whenever you're making mayonnaise. We've already talked about having the right kind of jar, an old pickle jar, a wet jar, or a tall skinny glass. All of those will work. You want something that is more narrow. You don't want to do it in a big bowl or pot. What type of oil you use matters on what your mayonnaise will taste like. If you use olive oil, it will have a very strong olive oil taste unless you use an extra light version. And then sometimes what happens if it doesn't start to emulsify? So sometimes for whatever reason, mayonnaise will break down. So if that happens, you just take another egg, put it in a clean container, um, and add a little bit of the broken mayonnaise into that clean container and use your stick blender, immersion blender, and blend it really nicely until it starts to emulsify. And then just pour in the broken mayonnaise, just like we did the avocado oil. And I think just about every single time that's happened to me and I've done it that way, it has worked, it's emulsified. But also remember, one of the keys is don't just stick your immersion blender in and just let it sit. You wanna be pulling it up and down and kind of back and forth, actively moving it. And while you continue to pour slowly, and it might look broken at first. I don't know if you noticed, but when I was doing it, it started to look broken at first. But as I just continued to do it and pull it up and down and move it around, it emulsified and it looked great and it thickened like it's supposed to. So those are just some tips. Make sure you have the right kind of jar. Make sure you're moving your immersion blender. And if it does break, just start over with another egg and add the broken mayonnaise. You don't have to add more oil or anything like that. Just add the broken mayonnaise and more times than not, that will, uh, that will fix it. And you'll have this lovely, delicious mayonnaise. So get in your kitchen, make some, and then let me know in the comments if you've ever made your own mayonnaise and what you plan to do with it when you do make your own. I'll see you next time.